So polar coordinates give another system for labeling points in the plane. Um, the coordinate system that you're most accustomed to using is the rectangular coordinate system. In the rectangular or Cartesian coordinate system, the points in the plane are labeled as an x, comma, y. And to arrive at a point using the rectangular coordinate system, you start at the origin, you go over x units in the x direction, Okay, so this direction of x is positive, this direction of x is negative, and then you go up or down y units. So to get to the point 1, 3, we'll go over 1 unit in the x direction, and then up 3 units in the y direction. So the polar coordinate system gives us another way of arriving at points in the plane. In the polar coordinate system, points are labeled as r, theta. r is called the radial coordinate, and theta is called the angular coordinate. Okay, to get to a point in the plane when we're using the polar coordinate system, we start along this polar axis right here. We rotate through the angle theta, so if theta is positive, we rotate in the counterclockwise direction. So we rotate through the angle theta, and then starting at the pole here, we go out along the ray r units. So we go this direction if r is positive, and we go the opposite direction if r is negative. So here, if this distance is r, and this is the angle theta, this point here in the polar coordinate system is going to have label r comma theta. Okay, let me give you some concrete example. Okay, let's plot these two points here in the polar coordinate system. Okay, so let's start with the first one. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate through an angle of pi over 6 radians, and that's about 30 degrees. So we're going to be along approximately that ray right there. And then along this ray, we're going to go out two units. So I'm going to make this up, and I'll say that that's one unit, and that's two units. So the point 2 comma pi over 6 in polar coordinates is exactly at this location in the plane right there. Okay, so um, this line here, or this dotted line here, isn't actually part of it. I just use it as a guide to get the point. There goes my axis. So let me pretend it was right about there. Okay, so that point right there has polar coordinates 2, comma, pi over 6. To get to the point negative 1, comma, pi over 2, I go through the angle pi over 2, and that puts me on the positive y-axis. And then in this case, r is negative. So instead of going up along this ray one unit, I'm going to go in the exact opposite direction one unit. That puts me about right there. So in polar coordinates, this point has the label negative 1, comma, pi over 2. Uh, the interesting thing is that this actually could have another label. If I went through the angle of 3 pi over 2, then that's one unit out along that ray. So another label for this point is 1, comma, 3 pi over 2. And in fact, for every point in the plane, we have an infinite number of polar coordinates that will describe it because we keep going around the circle, around the circle. Okay, so for example, an angle of 4 pi means we've gone around once, which gives us 2 pi, and then once again, which takes us to 4 pi. Okay, sometimes it's useful to go back and forth between polar and rectangular coordinates. So we have a, a few formulas for these conversions. The formulas for the polar to rectangular conversion is that the x-coordinate is going to be equal to r times the cosine of the theta, and the y-coordinate is going to be equal to r times the sine of theta. And those are pretty easy to see using trigonometry. So if we go up here to our definition, 
here we have this point here has coordinates r comma theta. So it means r is the length of the hypotenuse, and theta is the angle there, where we have this right triangle. The x-coordinate of this point is going to be this side of the triangle. The y-coordinate of this point is going to be this leg of the triangle. So we see that cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's equal to x divided by r. So that means that x is equal to r times cosine theta. The y-coordinate, well, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's y divided by r. So that tells us that y is equal to r times the sine of theta. Okay, so using trigonometry, we can easily see that these are the proper formulas to convert between polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates. Okay, to go from rectangular to polar, we have that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, and that the tangent of theta is equal to y divided by x. Okay, so in this case we know x and y, and this is how we find r and theta. Okay, the first one is true. We can see up, whoa, let me put that back down. Okay, so the first one we can see up here by using the Pythagorean theorem. So here this hypotenuse is r. We know the Pythagorean theorem says that x squared plus y squared is the square of the hypotenuse. So x squared plus y squared is r squared. And we can also see the other one, that tangent of theta is y over x, because we know that the tangent of an angle is the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the adjacent side. Okay, so that's why these two um, sets of conversion formulas are true. Let's put them to use. Okay, let's find polar coordinates for the point 1 comma root 3 in the xy plane. So the best thing to start by doing is by uh, plotting, is to plot the point. So we have one unit in the x direction and root 3 units in the y direction. So that's going to be uh, between 1 and 2, but closer to 2. So we'll say that that's the point 1 comma root 3 given in the uh, rectangular coordinate system. And we want to find polar coordinates to describe this point right here. We should always start by finding theta because r can take on positive or negative values and so we'll ma make it according to what we've decided theta is going to be. So we know that tangent of theta is equal to the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. So in this case tangent of theta is going to be equal to root 3 and we know from the unit circle that tangent of theta is equal to root 3 when theta is equal to pi over 3. So this angle here is pi over 3 radians. To get the r value, we're going to use the fact that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So in this case, r squared is equal to 1 squared plus root 3 squared. That's equal to 1 plus 3, which is 4. So that means that r can either be 2 or negative 2 because r squared equals 4 has the solutions 2 and negative 2. But r lies, but our point lies on the ray theta equals pi over 3. When r lies on the ray, we know r has to be positive. So we know that r has to be equal to 2 in this case. So that point there has polar coordinates 2 comma pi over 3. Okay, let me have you uh, try one. Okay, so why don't you find polar coordinates for the point in the xy plane given by x equals negative 2 comma y equals negative 2. Press pause while you work on it. Okay, so you should find that tangent of theta is equal to 1 because it's the y coordinate over the x coordinate. And we know that tangent of theta equals 1 when theta equals pi over 4. Okay, so one possibility here is that theta equals pi over 4, and so I'm going to solve the problem as if I've chosen this for my angle. But remember, there are, many, there are infinitely many ways to describe points. So 
While the angle theta equals pi over 4 can be used to describe this point, so can theta equals 5 pi over 4. Okay, but again, I'm going to use theta equals pi over 4. So if theta equals pi over 4, then to find r, I use the fact that r squared is x squared plus y squared. So that's equal to 4 plus 4, which is 8. So that tells me that r is equal to either 2 root 2 or negative 2 root 2. If I'm using the angle theta equals pi over 4, then my point does not lie on that ray. It lies the opposite of that ray, in which case I know my r needs to be negative. So in this case, I'm going to use the r value negative 2 root 2. So this point here can be described by the coordinates negative 2 root 2, comma, pi over 4. But also, positive 2 root 2, comma, 5 pi over 4, is a perfectly acceptable answer as well. Okay, to go from polar to rectangular, all we do is we plug the value of theta in and the value of r into these, and it tells us the x and the y coordinate. So, for example, if we have the polar point um, 2 comma pi over 4, x is equal to r cosine of theta, so that's 2 times the cosine of pi over 4. The cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, so that means that x is going to be equal to root 2. y is equal to r sine of theta, so that's 2 sine of pi over 4. Sine of pi over 4 in this case is also equal to root 2 over 2. Well, sine of pi over 4 is always equal to root 2 over 2. Um, but it's not always the case that the cosine and the sine of the angle are going to be the same. So 2 times root 2 over 2, which is root 2. So in this case, the point 2 pi over 4 in polar coordinates, so that's angle pi over 4, we go out 2 units, has labels root 2, comma root 2 in the xy coordinate system. Okay, so that's how we go from polar to rectangular. It's a bit easier than going from rectangular to polar. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do in this review is to uh, give you a quick, um, a quick graphing problem. Okay, so I want to graph this equation here as a polar equation. But what I want to do is graph it. The easiest way to graph it is to convert to uh, rectangular coordinates. So my rectangular coordinate formulas are that x is equal to r times the cosine of theta and y equals r times the sine of theta. So whenever I see this, I get to substitute for x and y. So what I'll observe here is that the secant of theta is equal to 1 over cosine of theta. So another way of writing this is that r is equal to 3 times 1 divided by cosine of theta. And I can get an r times cosine of theta out of this problem by multiplying both, both sides of this by cosine of theta. So then the left side becomes r cosine of theta. On the right side, the cosine of theta cancels, so I get 3. r cosine of theta is the same as x. So this polar equation has the equation x equals 3 in rectangular coordinates. And I know that the graph of x equals 3 is a vertical line going through x equals 3. So the graph of the equation r equals 3 secant of theta is this line, this vertical line right here.